excuse me, a quick update on two of my larger species, my Pamphibedius species Duran, which is over on the right, and my Therophosa stermi, which is over on the left. Figured it'd be cool to compare these guys because I got them roughly at the same time. The Pamphibedius species, I believe I picked up in February of 2015. At the time, they were about one, one and a half inch slings. The Therophosa stermi I picked up in October of 2014. So close, and they were 1.5 inch slings as well. Both these guys have been incredible eaters, very, very fast growers. I mean, these are two species that if you pick up a sling, you're going to have a big hairy tarantula before years up, as long as you're feeding them well. Um, one of the things that was mentioned when I posted up pictures of my Nandrew Tripepe, I believe it was Gigolo J mentioned, hey, why don't you throw up a molt next time and measure it out? And I think that's a great idea. So from now on, when I do these molting updates, it makes all the sense in the world to put the molts up, measure them if, as long as they're intact, and then maybe even get a sex on some of them. So we'll start off with the Pamphibedia species. Um, this is one I picked up and I've been documenting them quite a bit, um, not only because they're really pretty, but because I couldn't find a heck of a lot on them when I purchased them. I was looking for pictures of adult females and males to kind of get an idea of what I could expect. And there wasn't very much online. One of the things that was very cool is that when they molted and got a certain size, they picked up this kind of, uh, hopefully it'll show up, this almost fuchsia pinkish color. Now, granted, this is a molt and it's very, very dull now. But that was something I've been following as these guys get bigger and wondering if this color is going to stay. So first, let's get a real quick measurement on this <clears throat> as I open up my tape measure. So if we look here, you go diagonally, and we're looking at about five inches or so. Eh, actually, closer to five and a half if you go up. So big, big girl, and definitely a girl. I did sex this one out before. She had a molt that uh, she actually was nice enough to leave the area between the two book lungs for me. But if you look in there, and I'll go ahead and try to... Spermatheca is right in there. I mean, definitely a female, which is great. And again, thought it was a female, but it was nice to have another larger, completely intact mold to get a look at it. And let me just move this one aside and open the top. Hopefully she won't get nasty. And there she is. Now, as you can see, some of those colors have faded, and that was something I kind of expected. Um, a lot of these guys will go through color changes as they mature. I was hoping she'd keep those fuchsias. Again, this is a species where the males will sometimes have these bright purples and fuchsias and everything. Um, unfortunately, they they did mute out a little bit. Now she's kicking hair at me. We'll go ahead and leave her alone a little bit. Um, but still a gorgeous species. Very, very big. I'm guessing now probably closer to six and a half, seven inches, but I'll try to get a good measurement on her. Again, I hate exaggerating. There's enough people on there saying they have these giant spiders, and I always go back and try to correct myself if uh, I'm wrong. But absolutely gorgeous, beautiful girl. And again, I'll be interested to see what happens when these guys, as they mature, what colors they take. If they keep any of those traces of pinks and reds and the orange melony carapace, or if it all goes away. But either way, just gorgeous species. Now let's get over to the Sturmi. Now again, this is a big girl as well. As I get my tape measure ready. <clears throat> if you see here, now again, she's kind of curled up a bit because the molt's been kind of dried out but at least six inches. When I first had the molt out, it was very wet. It was closer to six and a half, but we'll just call it six inches. And again, if I can go ahead and zoom in here, there's a very clear shot of her spermatheca right in there. So definitely a female, which is great. The other one's a male. He's already molted a couple months before her, so it was pretty obvious. But um, there we go as we focus. Gorgeous, gorgeous species. And let me go ahead and take the top off of this. Now, she's been pretty good lately. I've been jinxing myself a lot, but as you can see, she's put on a ton of size. So I'm guessing easily close to seven, seven and a half inches. Hopefully she doesn't kick or I'm going to catch it right in the face. But beautiful girl. Um, she hasn't taken her first meal yet. She molted about a week ago. So what I usually do for the bigger ones, I mean, common thought is you want to fatten them up as fast as possible. So you usually offer them something big. What I usually do is toss in something small for these big guys first to kind of gauge whether or not they're ready to eat. So as opposed to dropping a big uh, hissing cockroach in there or a big dubia and have her not want to eat, I'll drop in a couple crickets. If they go for it, then later on I'll go ahead and drop the big prey in. So I'm going to go ahead and close this before she, oh, she's okay. These guys can move very, very fast, deceptively fast for such a large body spider. Um, I have a big male that's probably close to eight and a half inches or so that can really boogie when motivated. So two big species molted, two females, which is great. Um, I will be very interested to check out the other 
The other Panthabidia species, Duran, I did not get an actual molt, uh, sex the molt on it. However, considering it's molting behind this one, they've both been molting generally around the same time, same kind of growth rate. I'm guessing that it is probably also a female, so I'll have two, which will mean I'll have to decide whether or not I'm going to get rid of one or not. Uh, it is one of the things spaces get into a premium here because I buy a lot of doubles. And so it might be time to get rid of some of the ones I've been holding on to and make sure they go to new homes. We'll see how that goes. So again, two great species kept very uh, similarly. Um, one thing I've noticed with the Theraphos is I used to go nuts on trying to keep the substrate super moist. And I found that they're a lot hardier than I, well, more hardy than I think they're giving credit for. So although I do keep the substrate moist, I don't fixate on it. I don't obsess on it. And it seems like as long as the bottom layers are moist, and they've got water, they do absolutely fine. Same thing with Panthabetes uh, species, they seem to do well. As long as you uh, keep it, you know, keep an eye on the, the substrate, make sure it doesn't, you know, stay dry for too, too long. But I've, I've done like half an enclosure, I'll wet it down and let it completely dry out and keep water and they've done perfectly fine. So just something of note that I've noticed while keeping them, because these were two species that I obsessed over when I first got them as far as keeping the moisture up. You hear these horror stories about bad molts. And so far that hasn't been the case. And I've gotten, I don't want to say lax, but a little more comfortable with letting things dry out a bit. Voids mold issues, avoids stuffy enclosures. And speaking of enclosures, both these guys are probably getting bigger enclosures very, very soon. So again, we have Theraphos sturmi and Pampavidius species duran, two amazing large giant tarantulas. And uh, I'll keep everybody posted. Hopefully we get a feeding video of these guys pretty soon.